Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're talking about a crucial issue of the National Investigative Agency. So yesterday in the Parliament, in the Upper House, the Rajya Sabha as well, the bill has been passed without any contestation. And we have with us Gautam Navlakha. Thank you, Gautam, for joining us. And over the last few months, there is a lot of furore and a lot of hue and cry about national security. It has become a very important political pitch. Elections were contested on this. And the BJP is very actively, in a sense, pushing uh, for these changes that have happened. And Amit Shah as well, yesterday, he has made very um, strong statements about the NIA. So what kind of... Uh, like currently in this atmosphere, what what do you make of the statements? What has he said, and what is uh, what should be the key message that we should understand from this? That this government is committed to uh, to pursuing um, uh, cases against those th that it considers. One should lay emphasis on that that the BJP considers as as terrorists, and therefore. Uh, strengthening the laws as they believe empowering the investigating and the uh, investigating agencies primarily national investigating agency um, as well as the the prosecutors uh, of uh, nia uh, which is going to make the life of uh, accused who fall into the trap uh, even more difficult as it is with anti-terror laws that we have, the rights and the, and whatever little protection that they they you know an accused have, is provided by a number of procedures which are part of of the Indian Penal Code. Uh, it's pretty apparent that it's it's the powers of of the investigating and prosecutorial uh, agencies which is increasing at the expense of the rights of uh, uh, an ordinary citizen. Absolutely. And so Amit Shah yesterday, he's been saying that there were no, uh, there was not much evidence in the Samjhauta blast case and recently all the accused were also acquitted. And uh, they're also saying that uh, the, the linking of Hinduism with uh, the acts of terror has been political vendetta by the UPA government. Well, there's too much of, a lot of uh, politicking uh, in, in the statements that uh, the new Home Minister Amit Shah has made on a variety of issues and NIA and UAP are no exception. Uh, and he's also very, it's what is problematic is that they are, uh, uh, all politicians and all ministers are little careful in sharing all the information and data. But in his case, I think it surpasses even those. Uh, for instance, he, he made it a point that POTA was never misused. Yeah. Uh, there's not a single instance, which is not true. We know of cases, I mean, I recall, recollect from my memory a case from Jharkhand where more than 28 people, amongst them, there were women and children who had been picked up and uh, POTA had been invoked against them. It's only because there were a lot of hue and cry and public protests that the, uh, that the government had to back down. Uh, as far as Samjhota goes, Samjhota is a very interesting case. Yeah. Nobody had thought of, I mean, before uh, him and Karkare's uh, uncovering of the of the of the of the Hindutva plot in in Malegaon blast of 2006, uh, 2008, yeah. if my memory serves me right. Until then, uh, investigative agencies never. Never, I mean, the only leads they would chase would be of Lashkar e Taiba, uh, ISI, and uh, Simi. But coming back to Samjota, Samjota, when the case began, automatically they were looking at uh, Lashkar e Taiba's hand. And uh, it took, it was two or three years before. Uh, when they had run out of any, I mean, it was leading nowhere. They had arrested a lot of people, but the investigators, uh, investigations were leave, leading nowhere. And that was the time that, that the Hindutva angle came up, that the NIA started looking into uh, Samjhota afresh. Yes. 
so there was a time lag between the the original crime which took place in 2007 and by the time nia got into the picture a gap of about 3 years by which time the crime scene the leads the evidence had already weakened despite that they managed to file charge sheet now the interesting thing about the charge sheet and what the judgment says is the fact that you know it's impossible that any charge sheet would be filed by without being looked at by the law officers by the yeah. prosecutors now if the charge sheet filed and claimed that they had sufficient evidence they had witnesses they had solid electronic evidence etc etc uh, cctv camera footage etc from old delhi railway stations from the samjhota train used to depart and arrive things like that or records of the hostel stays and things like that or the make of the bomb and and from that uh, seeing the link between this bomb and the other bombs that had been discovered in other hindutva cases now miraculously when the trial started after 2013 and especially during the previous in the last 5 years of uh, uh, narendra modi government uh, one miraculously electronic evidence was never produced cctv camera footage it claimed was never existed now how is it possible for law officers of nia to have overlooked all this and to have approved the filing of the charge sheet before the nia court it's impossible unless they are so bad at their job that they allowed such a weak charge sheet to be filed and to to pursue then trial under that so there are a lot of mysterious things that have happened and we know from nis conduct in the case i mean from uh, if you rohini um, uh, i forget her name i mean the prosecutor nia prosecutor uh, who in 2015 reveal that she was coming under pressure uh, from her bosses to take it easy uh, and not to oppose very strongly uh, bail being granted to some of the hindutva accused Uh, and then subsequent revelations that have also come made it very clear that nia's role is not as as uh, they are not as guilt free as it is being made to appear and and at this juncture of sorts they are being extra powers are being given to the agency and uh, it is all being uh, done in the name of strengthening national security so what are these changes that are being made and what are the kind of implications that we can expect well some of the the number of Uh, you know when the nia act if you go to the nia act it it lays down which are the schedule acts yeah where nia can intervene okay and take up the cases uh this has been expanded uh so the number of issues uh from in fact now they can even look into into cases of explosives and substance substance act although there is a separate act for that but nia can look into those yeah. cases also <clears throat> but four major areas of changes quite apart from that is one is that until now nia had had uh, 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 had powers uh, did not have same powers as police officers uh, across the country in terms of investigating cases and all now they are being being, being brought at par in fact in nis case now it, it was earlier mentioned that only a deputy a, a deputy superintendent of police would investigate such cases now they have lowered that threshold and they made it possible for an inspector of nia to also investigate the cases secondly the central government now has power to set up uh sessions court or designate various sessions court on its own uh to uh, as special nia uh, nia court to hear nia yeah. cases which was which was not there earlier in fact you required the concurrence of the of the state of the high court of that particular state yeah. uh to to designate that so there was an element of some some uh, what could say some protection yeah. some insurance against uh the central government acting arbitrarily uh on its own um uh, then there is uh, uh the most remarkable of course is that nia now has powers to investigate cases outside okay. india yeah. 
So these are broadly four areas where NIA's powers have been enhanced. But it's if you look at the NIA Act and the and the gradual manner in which its powers have been there's been incremental uh, growth in their powers, it makes it very clear that NIA now is the is the is the preferred investigative agency for the central government. Now that CBI has been reduced to 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 a joke, now NIA has been is is rising as the new star on the horizon but the most the most um, the dangerous thing uh, with with these changes is not so much in terms of mere empowerment yeah. of these agencies or the amendments in its charter it is in the context in which we are operating please understand in a in a country of our size um, to 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 declare on the floor of the parliament virtually that uh, uh, where this this seems to be the norm that elements i mean in this country today we would say that if there is any terror that faces it and it's across the country it is a terror unleashed by the lynch mobs and gorakshaks okay that is the living reality today uh, the number of cases, yes, there is a fear of ISIS and Al Qaeda entering, but there is no incident that has taken place in India yeah. so far. Whereas in the last five years, you have had any number of cases where people have been terrorized, and then that's the policy also. It that will never get covered by any of the anti-terror laws. Very simply, why? Because the manner in which terrorism is described and defined under these laws, it, it inherently carries a bias because any crime can get designated as a terrorist crime if the central government or the government, state government or the police believe that it threatens the unity and integrity of the nation. So if you go and murder, but if it can be linked to unity and integrity, then it becomes a terror crime, so it doesn't remain a homicide. Now in the case of Hindutva, you'll find it invariably now that it's, it's taken for granted that they never threaten the unity and integrity of the nation because they are Hindus. That's the dangerous point because it, does, it, is, not, it is not understood, it's not accepted, uh, acknowledged that actually creating divisions in the society and working to terrorize, say, minorities or other more vulnerable and marginal section threatens the unity and integrity far, uh, if not far more than other instances of, of crime, but at least at par with those, with those crimes, if not less, uh, if not more. My point is that if Amit Shah who made it so clear on the floor of the parliament and he claimed and boasted that the NIA and this, his government will, will not allow it to be misused. The point is the misuse begins from the very understanding of what is terrorism, yeah. what is, uh, how do you define it, how do you define Hindutva, how do you define and differentiate between Hinduism and Hindutva. What is the great danger that poses us on an everyday basis in terms of lynch mobs and gorakshaks who are running amok in this country? They are not recognized as, as terrorists, despite the fact that they cause terror. Yeah. And, and the aim is and the objective is to, to terrorize either the entire population or a section of the population. So it could be minorities or it could be a whole lot of other people. Uh, across the countries who come, I mean, it could be farmers, uh, it could be anyone. Now that doesn't get recognized, and that's the unfortunate reality. So you may have very good investigators and officers working in NIA, very competent, and there is no doubt that they would be. But the point is, if the law is construed in such a way, and the context within which this law operates today is so tilted against minorities, political dissidents, and other vulnerable and marginal uh, people, then it's obvious that it would work uh, in a manner 
which would be prejudicial to the interest of large mass of people in this country. It is not something which will inspire confidence or trust in the ability of NIA to, to, to come out with scientifically uh, you know, uh, uh, more scientific and rigorous investigation and, uh, and, a, and a solid case before, before the, with, with evidence, etc. Uh, it won't inspire in, in confidence in their ability to, to, to deliver justice to everyone. We end this uh, interview. We hope that we've been able to explain to our viewers more about the inherent contradictions in this bill. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Gautam, Thank for you. your insights. Thank you. Thank you.